Thanks for coming. <laughs> Thank you, Fernando, for the invitation. I'm really happy to be to be here. Now, just w I'm breaking the, <laughs> the dealium with the uh, theory, so I will give a talk talk about the status of the Dune experiment. Since we are in Natal, Dune is very appropriate as uh, as an argument. So, uh, just briefly to introduce the the Dune experiment. Uh, as you as you already heard, so and then we will have a talk specific on the on the physics uh, about of the Dune. Uh, the objective main objective of Dune is to the uh, neutrino oscillation. Uh, the experiment is uh, is uh, composed by uh, three main components. Uh, first of all, a neutrino beam, uh, which is produced at Fermilab. Uh, a megawatt beam with energy you will see later that the level of GV. Uh, then there is a near detector which monitors the outcoming neutrino beam, beam which can be uh, neut uh, num uh, neutrinos or can be operating in anti neutrino mode to do uh, keep evaluation studies. And the far detector, which is located 1,300 kilometers far away in the surf facility uh, one miles one mile underground I will show some details uh, some details later so this is sort of an idea the baseline uh, the Dune collaboration was created uh, officially in 2015 a uh, big uh, uh, boost to the formation of the collaboration was given by the prioritization of the PS5 panel and uh, the uh, US and European strategy of data in 2013. So uh, mid 2015, the collaboration, which was called LBNE, changed, changed the name, and the Dune was born. Uh, actually, it is a very big experiment, which uh, uh, involves a more than 1,000 researchers. We are 1,006 for 182 institutions from 32 countries and Latin America is, uh, is well representative uh, nowadays. Uh, just a brief overview of the experiment uh, and of the, of the BIN, the LBNF BIN. Uh, LBNF stands for Long Base Baseline Neutrino Facility. Uh, so the BIM start with an intense uh, proton beam, megawatt of uh, power, uh, then this curve is, uh, mm, is here for technical reason because of the radius of curvature uh, of the proton beam. Uh, the proton beam then smashes on the, on the target which produces uh, pion and kaons which then decay into muon and neutrinos. Uh, muons are absorbed and neutrinos go free uh, propagating below the earth crust for 1,300 kilo 300 kilometers to South Dakota. Uh, the, the beam is clearly is quite well uh, uh, focused, uh, uh, but after 1,300 kilometers, the, the, the spot of the beam is of the other kilometers. So for this reason, the beams need to be very intense because the, the cross-section of the detector is uh, very small with respect to the dimension of the beam. We are at the level below 1%, well below 1%. So this is, the, uh, this is the how we expect to have the, uh, the energy spectrum of the beam. Uh, it's peaked around uh, uh, 2 GV. Uh, these are the contamination of uh, anti and uh, nu, uh, nui and anti nui. Uh, the technology uh, which is which will be used uh, to build the far detector is based on this uh, on the liquid argon time projection chamber this technology has been developed for about 30 years by Dicker's collaboration on this uh, now mature to uh, uh, to be used in a large very large scale experiment for this is one uh, the, the, the type of event you collect with this uh, chamber so is uh, uh, bubble cha bubble chamber quality. Uh, a brief overview of the operating principle. We have a liquid argon uh, volume, which is the target, 
being an Neutrino experiment, you need the dense target, you need to have big mass to, uh, to collect enough uh, neutrino interaction in a reasonable time. Uh, the liquid argon volume is, is uh, inside an electric field which is established by a cathode plane and uh, a, an anode. The cathode plane is a simple, uh, uh, simple plate, metallic plate, typically, while the anode is made by a sequence of uh, uh, wire planes with the wi wires oriented in different directions. Uh, when an event happens in liquid argon, uh, you have the interaction and the charged particles produce ionization uh, along the tracks. So the anode are drifted, the, the positive charge are drifted toward, uh, toward the cathode and the electrons are drifted toward the, to the anodic plane. Uh, the drift velocity of the uh, positive ions is uh, mm, three order of magnitude higher than the electrons, so this signal of the positive ion is not collected. So we only are connect collecting a negative charge, so the electric field is extremely uniform. Uh, so you need to imagine this track made of uh, uh, electrons the, the which drift uh, rigidly toward the wire planes. The, the arrangement of the, elec the electric field which is used is typically 500 volts per centimeter. That for the drift of the dune, uh, which is 3.5 meter, corresponds to an electric to a potential one, uh, 170 kilovolt, which is, uh, which is by itself challenging. Uh, the electric field be between the field, the, the wires, uh, the plane, wire planes are arranged in such a way that the, the, the same uh, electrons are not captured by the first wire planes. So these, these tracks uh, pass through the wire wires and induce signals on the wires they pass nearby. So they induce the same electron induce signals on the first plane, on the second plane, and are collected in the third plane. So the first plane are called the induction plane because the, the signal is produced by the induction of, uh, uh, of electric signal by the passage of these packets of electrons. Th so reading out all the wires uh, of each plane is allowed to have a bidimensional representation of the, of the event. These are the type of signal you collect on each wire. Each wire is, is read out by an electronic channel. So you have uh, tens of thousands of electronic channels. And uh, each plans plane uh, gives you a, um, a bidimensional representation of the event. Combining the three planes, you have a three-dimensional representation of the event. What you are missing is the absolute position along the drift, since uh, you need to know when the electron started to drift the, the to, um, to know where, where the, the absolute position of the, the event is. Uh, this signal is given by the light, since uh, when the interaction happens, you don't, don't have only production of ionization, but al also of light, which is a very fast signal, is coincident with the production of the, uh, of the event, uh, while the drift of the charge is very slow. The drift velocity is one millimeter per microsecond, so to collect uh, a signal over uh, three meters, you need milliseconds. So knowing the difference in time between the production, the light signal, and the detection, knowing this, this drift velocity, which is uh, very well known, then the drift, is, uh, the drift field, the electric field is very constant, you know the distance, the position, absolute position inside the detector. So you, have, you have a complete three-dimensional reconstruction. You have a very uh, precise calorimetric measurement, uh, also, also very grained, because of the spacing of the wires of three millimeters. And you have in addition, you have the light signal, which gives additional information about the, 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 the uh, energy release, because the light is proportional to the, to the collected, uh, to, the, to the deposited energy. Uh, this, this is the technology which has been developed uh, for many years, and is the so-called single phase technology. The Dune will implement the dual phase technology, which is uh, essentially the same, with the exception that the drift is on the top of the, of the, the detector, so you have a dr much longer drift, around, twel long, uh, around 12 meters, uh, and the signal, the electrons, the, 
the tracks of the, ele of the, the electrons are extracted in a gas phase where the, they are further accelerated to multiply the electron signal uh, to have a better signal to noise ratio. Uh, so this is the idea. You have the drift field that is again uh, 500 volts per centimeter. Then you have an electric field which will extract the uh, electron from the liquid to the gas. Technology which is very similar to what, what is done in dark matter experiment. Double phase experiment works like this. Uh, then there is an, uh, another field which accelerates the electron to amplify the signal. Again, the same as dark matter. Uh, this is done by uh, with this LEM large electron multiplier. These are holes where it is applies applied an electric field which inside the holes becomes very extremely high at the level of 30 kilovolt per centimeter. Electrons then are extracted from the, from the holes and are, co and are detected by uh, this, the, this PCB uh, module uh, which uh, implements a, a B-dimensional readout. Again, you need the light signal which is in this case detected with the photomultiplier on the bottom uh, to have the T0, to have the com precise, complete three-dimensional reconstruction. Um, uh, the you can have longer drift because you are amplifying the, the, the electron signal, so you can allow to, to lose electron lo during the drift uh, more, more easily. Uh, and so... <coughs> This is what, what can be done with this kind of technology. Uh, this is a stop, stop muon. Uh, this, there is always a joke that people do that liquid argon is not blue. Uh, that we show later uh, that is not, not the case. So this is a stop muon. This is a color E, color code, uh, where uh, red means uh, higher uh, energy release. You see that the muons lose energy or energy. Then the energy uh, loss increases. This is the Bragg peak. Uh, then the, the, the muon decay, you see the, the Michel electron and photons emitted during the, 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 the annihilation of the, of the electron. Uh, so a lot of details, a lot of uh, uh, physics, also basic physics which can be done. Let me show other events. Uh, so this is a different color index. These are, mm, very old uh, Icarus events, but you can see also in this case the quality of the reconstruction, really bubble chamber quality. Again, moon decay, mu plus, electron, photons. This is, this is on two view, two different view. This is a kaon decaying to a muon and then to an electron. Uh, you can also see how works the particle uh, identification. Uh, this is done by uh, plotting the, the, the energy loss per uh, unitary path, that is the energy loss per wire, with respect to the uh, um, stopping point of the particle. You see that the point for the chaos, for the muon, goes on different, uh, on different paths, and you can distinguish the particles. Yeah. What? Uh, no. Yeah, this one. No, BC is muon. The positron is CD. Ah, no, sorry, this is another event. This is a moody kind, this is a chaos the kind. These are different events. Uh, and so here you see uh, the, and, uh, the same event, one of the, the moon the kind event in three different views, and this is the complete three dimensional reconstruction. This is the principle of operation of this, of this detector. Uh, just to go on uh, uh, what we are doing, this is a neutri real neutrino event. This is an electron neutrino event detected by the with the CNGS beam and the Icarus detector. The, the, uh, the, mm, the uh, CNGS beam was a NUMU uh, beam uh, which propagated for 700 kilometers from, from CERN to Grand Sass and was detected by the Icarus experiment. So these are two, two electron neutrino, electron neutrino. You, you know that they are electron neutrino because you see that the electromagnetic shower originating from, from the vertex. Um, 
as I said, uh, an important part of the experimental technique is detection of light. And I want to put a bit of emphasis on this, e even if we will have a talk uh, just after this one on, on this spe specific uh, uh, argument, because it's what we are doing, um, uh, something which Brazilian and Latin American institutions are putting a lot of effort in. Uh, so as, as I said, uh, liquid argon produce um, also scintillation line when it, when it is excited by charged particles. This is the, the high process is highlighted here. The, the, mm, the final result is that uh, uh, scintillation photon are emitted with a wavelength of 128 nanometers. And this is one of the problems of the detection of liquid argon scintillation light, since uh, this is in the vacuum ultraviolet, where the vast majority of the photon detector are not sensitive, because there are very few materials which are transparent to this wavelength. So you will need to uh, so you, you need to use very specific materials which are very expensive. So uh, what is done is instead to convert this light with the use of chemicals to other wavelengths so that one can use um, commercial, uh, commercial um, uh, photo detectors. Uh, but again, Anna will, uh, will tell everything about, about, uh, about this. Uh, so I, I told you uh, one of the reasons for which we need uh, to detect scintillation light. Um, that is to make the absolute localization of the vent inside the, the detector. For you know, what does it mean for the physics? Uh, it is very important for nuclear, um, for nuclear, dec nuclear dec decay vents since you need to uh, discard background which comes from outside. So you need to have uh, localization as much as possible, pre possible precise inside the detector in such a way that you are sure that your event is not originating from the sides of your uh, active volume that could be something produced just outside and part of the event in coming outside uh, mimicking some kind of uh, uh, nuclear uh, decay, nuclear decay event. Uh, it's supposed to use also if we want to detect uh, uh, supernova neutrino burst. Um, as you've heard this morning uh, several times, uh, supernova is a very uh, important topic in uh, neutrino physics, and uh, we need to be uh, ready and prepared to detect one if it will explode. Um, so we need to be careful with the trigger. So uh, the main trigger for supernova in uh, Dune will be on the charge, but the, the light is a redundant trigger which allows to uh, back up the charge in case of, in case of need. Uh, and on top of it, it allows to uh, extend the sensitivity of Dune uh, to supernova bars. Uh, and uh, probably most important of all, with the latest uh, development uh, we have done, in particular with this Brazilian proposal of the Arapuca, we were able to increase the efficiency of the photon detection at the level that uh, the calorimetric measurements we do with charge are actually uh, competitive with the one we do with the charge, with the light are competitive with the one we do with the charge. Uh, this was, was done thanks to an improvement of the factor of 10 of the efficiency we have done in the last year important because we can cross-check the measurement and increase the overall resolution of the detector. Uh, this is uh, some phase of the installation. This is the photon detection system, how it looks like of Dune. Uh, we'll see more details later. It is in form of bar, which has slided inside the, the wire planes. Uh, the photon collector, that is this white bar, is based on the Xarapuca technology which are read out, then the signal is read out by silicon PM. Uh, let's just move forward to the experimental sun. As I told you, um, the far detector will be installed in the surf facility in uh, South Dakota, and the experimental hall will be at the level of about 1,500 1, meters underground, uh, where you can ascend with two shafts. Both of them have been refurbished in order to be used uh, for the construction since everything so this enormous detector 
with uh, 40,000 tons of liquid argon need to be built underground. So all the components go inside the shaft and then are assembled inside. Uh, as you probably know, the SURF laboratory is already hosting several experiments, LAX, Majoran, LZ, Caspar, and June will be here. And there, the in the green, you can see the new excavation, which started in 2000, uh, 2017. This is a global view of the complex. These are the two shafts. This is the Ross uh, complex and the shaft which will go, will go down. Uh, these are some of the pre-excavation uh, works. This is the renovation of the Ross shaft. As uh, you can see, it is an old, this is was an old, uh, an old shaft, so a lot of effort needs to be done to put it uh, at, at the reasonable stage. So, and there are a lot of works with are which are already, mm, which are started. So there is the, the, the replacement of the fan, uh, the rehabilitation of the, of the motor, the brakes and the clutches re, uh, replacement, and the, uh, ec the increasing on the capacity of one of the chamber, which is already there. This is a, a view from uh, Google Art. So the uh, Roth shaft is here. So all the uh, eight, uh, 875,000 tons of rock which will be excavated, which will, will, will go here, where there is a hole which, has, which will be filled with all this rock. So this is one of the modules of the detector. Just to be precise, the module will be segmented into four modules, which will be mm, built in a, in a stage with a stage strategy. Uh, the first one, uh, each one, uh, will, uh, will be filled with about 17,000 uh, tons of liquid argon. These are uh, the dimensions, so you can see 66 meters by more or less 20 per 20, uh, so it's an enormous detector, and uh, we will need 1,000 tracks of when with 20, 20 ton of liquid argon to fill one of these. It will take months. So you need to imagine that the 1,000 tracks need to arrive on top of the, on the underground site, and then you need to fill from the above ground to underground. So the argon is first gasified and then reliquified underground. So it's uh, really uh, an enormous effort. And the new response comes from come from this direction. Uh, this is the schematic of the uh, single phase detector. The first two modules will be single phase, single phase, the technology of the single phase. So uh, there will be four time projection chamber. You have an anodic plane, a central cathode, another anodic plane, 3.5 meters deep, and, and then again. Uh, cathodic frame, an anodic frame, and another anodic frame. Uh, the photon detection system will, will comprise 1,500 modules and 6,000 channels of electronics, uh, while the, 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 the readout of the, the, the wires uh, will require three, uh, three, um, 384,000 channels. So so the dual phase will have, a s will have the same external dimension but different technology. Uh, the third one, uh, probably the third detector, will be a double phase. And the fourth detector to complete the Dune is still an open question. So there is currently a workshop which has been organized and done is among the organizers uh, about the module of opportunity since the collaboration decided to open uh, to new ideas the fourth detector the fourth detector. So the, this workshop will be uh, in November uh, Brookhaven. Uh, the near detector, near detector is an important part of the, of the experiment since uh, you need to constrain as much as possible uh, the systematics uh, of the experiment, so uh, the unknown of the, of the bin. Uh, so it has been uh, it, it is not already is not something which is uh, fixed, but the, the, the fundamental idea are in this slide. Uh, should be an integrated system, 
composing of, se composing of several different uh, uh, sub-detectors, which should constrain as much as possible, reduce as much as possible the systematics uh, of, the, um, uh, of the beam. Uh, clearly, you want a target which is liquid argon, so the primary detector will be uh, a liquid argon TPC. It cannot be of the same technology we are using on the far detector, because as I told at the beginning, the detector is low, so you need milliseconds to collect one event. And we are when you are near, the rate of event is such such high rate that you cannot follow the detector with, with this low time. So it is more segmented, and uh, with the drift of zero of um, half a meter, it is made of cubes of half a meter. Each one is read out individually, uh, and uh, this technology is called for this reason argon. Reason argon uh, an interesting thing that the light detection system is inspired to the Arapuca. So it's a simplified version of what we proposed for the far detector. It is called a dark light. Uh, then there is a magnetized high pressure argon TPC, which allows to, uh, to determine the sign and the momentum of the particles. Um, then there is a superconducting magnet wi which has inside the tracking uh, uh, scintillator. Uh, these to cross-check the, uh, the, um, the uh, systematics of the two, of the two, of two different, two different detectors. The interesting thing is that all these uh, detectors can be moved on off axis, so that you can sample the beam. This is the sketch of the three, of the three main detector, liquid argon, a multi-purpose detector with the magnetized gas uh, argon TPC, which is the same uh, one of Alice, and this the spectrometer with inside the, the magnet. Uh, so there is the possibility to move this detector uh, off axis, that we uh, like this, so you can move on this direction so that you can monitor uh, you can sample the beam at different energy. This allows to reduce significantly the, 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 the uncertainty in reconstructing the true energy from the measured energy of the beam. This is another picture view of the same, of the same thing. You can see that the detector can be slid, with the exception of the magnet, which is very heavy, but the other two can be slided. Uh, Protodune uh, is the mm, largest scale um, prototype, the largest scale prototype of the Dune experiment. They have been built at, at CERN, uh, starting from 2017. Uh, there are two different Protodunes. One uh, is for the single phase technology, and the other one for the uh, dual phase technology. The single phase is operating since more or less one year, it's taking data stably. Uh, with uh, we took data for few ma for two months with the beam uh, particle charged beam, and now with cosmics, why the uh, dual phase has been filled since one month, so it's taking data right now. So th the idea of Protodune was to demonstrate and validate the technological choices which are been done have been done for the far detector. Uh, calibrate the, the, the system, the response of argon using the particle charged beam with known energy. And it is also a physics problem that is search of uh, boost, dark ma boost dark matter and measuring the cross-section in liquid argon. This is what it looks uh, like now. This is the so-called neutrino platform at CERN, which is in the Provescent site. This is the single phase. And this other one is the dual phase. And there is a beam which passes here and arrives here in the Protodium single phase. And this, this is the same experimental area in 2017, in 2016. So this happened in two, in two years. So all this was built in two years. This is the inside of the cryostat uh, before the installation of the detector. Um, it was built like a ship in a battle. Was that means that the cryostat was built. Uh, this is a, a technology of cryostat which is 
uh, mutuated from uh, uh, the crafts that which are used to transport uh, uh, natural liquefied natural gas on the on the ships on the boats the same technology uh, we left an open uh, an open door which is called the temporary construction opening TCO from which all the components of the detector were inserted and then built assembled inside and then was closed by one half and completely uh, sealed. So, and then the detector was filled with liquid argon. Uh, this is an interview of uh, the protodium after it was complete, before the filling. So you see the wires, uh, the cathode, and uh, you see the photon detector. There is a Brazilian uh, flag with other Latin America flags on the photon detector since was our contribution. Uh, this is, we contributed personally <laughs> with our work, uh, manual work to the construction of the detector. Since uh, you can see we are here, uh, we had to learn how to drive these things which goes out and moves. Uh, Anna was super expert in this. Uh, so we installed the photon detection system. Uh, and here you can see all the crew before the closure, uh, after the completion of the detector, before the closure of the TCO. So it was a very young team, and we are very proud of having participated to the construction of this uh, wonderful, wonderful detector. Uh, a critical parameter for the operation of the detector is the purity of liquid argon. What does what it means? That um, content in oxygen mainly needs to be as low as possible. Because since we need to drift electrons for meters, you need to avoid any electronegative uh, contam contaminants. And uh, um, argon, argon here is a, is a noble gas, is the reason for which, is, which it is used and does not catch electron. But uh, uh, oxygen, yes, yeah, so since, since the argon we buy is, um, is a byproduct of air liquefaction, uh, oxygen is clearly present. So there is, uh, there are, there is a very well known technique to purify liquid argon. So as you see at the beginning, uh, the lifetime of the electron is zero. Uh, to have an idea, uh, you need to be at the level three milliseconds in order uh, to get some kind of reasonable signal, since it's the drift time of the electrons, exactly this. With six meters, you can read out the electron 10 meter, 10 meter long, more or less. So you see, at the beginning, when you fill with a liquid argon, which is the one we you buy, you don't see anything. Lifetime is zero for you. So you need to purify, and it grows up, and then it keeps more or less stable. Uh, where you see this dip is because the recirculation system, the purifiers uh, were stopped for some reason, so you lose the purity, then you switch on and it comes back. Uh, these are some of the events we have collected, which, which you, you, you see in this kind of detector, for example, this is a, no, this is a great protodium. This is an aluminum with an electromagnetic shower. Uh, this is a pion interaction with four prongs. Uh, this is uh, an electromagnetic shower induced by a cosmic ray. You can see the bubble chamber quality of the events. Uh, this is a three-dimensional reconstruction of one event. You see that are very crowded because protodium is on, on ground, so it's exposed to all cosmic rays which comes from abo above, so you see a lot of things in, uh, in the protodium. This is another three-dimensional view uh, with muons, electromagnetic showers. Uh, this is the just a spoiler of the talk of Anna. This is a picture of the photon detection system. Uh, our system is this one, this Arapuca, which was, we had only two bars, one on each side. Uh, Why there were many other detectors of different technologies, two different technologies. Uh, this is one of the results. This is our Arapuca, the average number of photon collected, and these are all the others. So we see that we are uh, surpassing the other technology by a factor above more than five. Uh, these are some of the results we got with the protodium. This is uh, the, light, the light collected as a function of kinetic energy of the particle beam. And this is the resolution of the photon signal with respect to the, to the kinetic energy. In data taking, it is 
very stable, very smooth, our detector are behaving as expected. So we are pretty proud of this. So in conclusion, this is our uh, timeline for now. We just finalized the technical design report, which is a um, very important piece uh, of work for the collaboration. Uh, Protodune is continuing operating. Uh, we are already planning a Protodune run since several things changed from 2017 to now. So we uh, need to do another run to test exactly what will go in the far detector. This will be done between 2021-2022. Uh, the preparation of the Dune site is going on. It's clearly a very complicated work since, uh, since it's a big uh, big experimental site. Uh, so uh, the, the next milestone, uh, the probably the most important, is the installation of the first module, which we expect to start in August 2024, and the second one year after. So we expect to start taking data with the, the first as it is soon as it's completed, hopefully be before 2026. Uh, so uh, the data will start flowing as soon as the first module is completed. Uh, the beam will not be on uh, at the moment the detector will be uh, switched on, but it will be the chance to detect, to make uh, the what you do usually uh, when you commission such kind of new technology, detector or new technology, the calibration, uh, collect muons, uh, uh, cosmic and so on. Thank you. This this is our laboratory in Campinas. If some of you want to join us to work uh, uh, in experimental physics, photon detection, we are open. As you see, we have Fermi for his connection with neutrino physics. Uh, is one of our inspiration. Uh, Cesar Lattes, which is another uh, source of inspiration for being at Unicamp and starting the area of this, this kind of experimental physics we are, we are trying to follow on. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Well, I can ask one. Oh. So regarding the physics case, what do you think will be the main contribution of Dune for no to neutrino physics? Uh, I did 